Hello and welcome. If you're just joining us, you've got a few minutes to go before we're putting the world's strengths to work. Thank you for joining me, whether it's morning, afternoon or evening. It's always good to see such familiar names. I hope you're well. So your cameras are off. You have been muted, I'm afraid. It's one of those sessions, uh, but that doesn't mean that, of course, we don't want to hear from you. There's plenty of chat to use too. Ah, oh, Singapore, welcome uh, Chu Lang Eng from Singapore. Welcome Alexandra from Cheltenham. Angie, lovely to welcome you back. I hope you're well. Nice to see your face. Yeah, nice to see your name, should I say. A warm welcome from uh, Brazil, from Philippines, from Gabrielle, Austria. Goodness, I feel like I'm in the minority here, sitting in the UK. Uh, well, Australia, Agnes, you're mad. What time is it there in Australia? <laughs> and, and Faye in Western Australia. I hope you have a, a strong coffee. Uh, welcome from London and Dunstable and Manchester, 11 p.m. <laughs> well, thank you for your commitment to uh, joining us at 11 p.m. in Australia. Uh, and warm welcome to Rami from Lebanon. Just a couple more minutes and we will kick off and I'm joined by my colleague Lauren, who will also be uh, coming on board with us uh, on the webinar here. You know Lauren well, I know. Yeah, welcome to everybody. Welcome to today. Hi, from I'm from London. So uh, welcome to everybody uh, globally. Uh, I'm really excited for the next hour or so to be sharing this great data that we have. Uh, Jakarta, welcome from Indonesia. And Sharon from Dublin, if I've not mentioned you already, great to see such a global presence here today. I'm not even going to mention the weather because that's <laughs> being, being from the UK, we're not even going to go there. We're not going to go there, are we, Louise? <laughs> um, although I was talking to my mum in the uh, in the Devon uh, area yesterday, said it was beautiful at the moment. So uh, a warm welcome from Chichester and sunny Scotland, Andrew. Great to see so, so such familiar names and some hopefully some new names as well. Thank you, Louise. I think we need some hope on the way, don't we, for that. Half term week next week as well. Hello, Ben from uh, the University of Manchester. Another mad person in Aus Western Australia, Perth, Kate. Again, you know, ridiculous hours. So uh, very grateful to you joining us at this time. Samuel Hill's uh, from Spain, but working in Dallas. So we are kind of on time, Lauren, if you want to kick off when you're ready. Great stuff. So welcome everybody to today's webinar on putting uh, the world's strengths to work. Um, as you may or may not know, Strengths Profile helps people to be their best self uh, every day through unlocking their potential in their realized and unrealized strengths learn behaviours and weaknesses. Um, today, we're going to understand and appreciate and celebrate the diversity in our workplace by knowing the most and least common strengths, um, how we can support performance um, and, and appreciate the common en energy uh, and also the differences where we are, what we are energised by and, and not so much, uh, and how we can also increase our potential uh, by knowing and, and developing the common unrealised uh, strengths. So after the webinar today, you will receive a copy of the white paper that explores the key themes that we're going to cover today uh, in their fuller depth. Um, so please do listen up uh, and, and, and enjoy today. Uh, we will be covering five main areas uh, as we kind of reviewed the data across the, the strengths families. For some of you, the families will be a familiar uh, concept. For those who are new to it, the families are a conceptual mapping uh, that we've used to kind of cluster the 60 strengths that we have here at Strengths Profile. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with Strengths Profile, at the back of your profiles, you'll see the, the full definitions there and the list of the 60 strengths. 
Um, and within each uh, family, we'll be sharing the highlights to help really showcase the data and help to apply some of that learning for ourselves uh, and how we can review those strengths and appreciate how we show up in the world to be our best self uh, and the uniqueness and similarities uh, that we bring through our strengths. So in terms of introducing today, uh, throughout the session, uh, I do welcome you to put into chat uh, anything as we're going along, if it's kind of in tune with the, with the slides and, and a relevant comment, do pop it into the, to the chat for the more informal stuff. Uh, and we do have the Q&A function, which I will be uh, manning there. So if you have any really technical questions or uh, questions that you think are, are relevant and other people may want to know the answer to, do pop them into the, the Q&A function and, and I'll be on hand to, to support with you throughout today's session. Um, so I'm going to go and introduce a bit about Capfinity and who we are, as you can see on, on the screen here. Uh, so we were founded in 2005, so we've been around for some time now. Uh, we're market leading in the assessment and, and innovative development solution space. Um, and we help organizations to, to discover what they need to know about their people. We have over 16 years of data, so that we do have a lot of rigor behind a lot of the, the, the data that we bring to you today and, and other uh, products that we have there too. Um, in terms of who we are at Catfinity, we're a team of over 160 people. We are formed of psychologists, assessors, engineers, uh, and data scientists. Uh, and we offer a complete, a complete talent uh, assessment kind of life cycle. Uh, we combine uh, innovation with credibility. We're multi-award winning. Um, and we can, if you do check us out on our LinkedIn and our other pages, you'll be able to be up to date with the, the latest awards that we are winning uh, there. We are based in uh, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and the US, and we are exp expanding our global presence um, in terms of our offline and online assessment of of offering. Um, so we do provide assessment solutions through ATS systems, so we are integrated with over 20 other platforms, so if you think your organisation, um, this is, uh, you know, Catfinity, uh, one of the products you'd like to use, do get in contact with us, uh, and we are ISO 2001 accredited. So Welcome to today's session uh, and we're going to next go into a bit about um, how we characterize strengths here at, at Strengths Profile and we have three core characteristics of how we define strengths at Capfinity. So we often get asked you know what is a strength um, and, and we often hear the answer something we're good at uh, and we you know we give half a point for that answer because uh, yes in order for something to be a strength we do need to be good at it but we know Part of it is, 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 is performance. So yes, how well we are, how good we are at that thing. But the second element that we like to characterize here at Capfinity is through that element of energy. So it's got to be, we've got to enjoy it. And, and that's a critical component um, when we think about a, a strength, you know, how we feel, how energized we feel when we're using that particular strength in practice. And, and I think practice is a, is a key word because that takes us onto our third component of a strength, which is use. So if we're good at something, we're energized by it, we don't use it very often. Um, it's, it's what we would call an unrealized strength. So, and if it's unrealized for us, it means that we're not given the ability to really tap into our potential. Uh, and at Capability, we're all about kind of strengthening the world. So that potential is, is important for us to really maximize and, and tap into. So performance, energy, and use, those are the three core components, how we define and describe strengths here at Capability. Um, and once we have that foundation of performance, energy and use, we then can go on to form here what we call our the strengths profile model of development. Uh, and, and how the strengths fall in each of these four quadrants depends on how you respond to each of the attributes that, that we measure, uh, the 60 strengths that we measure at strengths profile. Um, so the, the performance, energy and use is a component in each of the four quadrants. So we start with the top left, so our realized strengths. These are things that we perform well, we're good at and we use a lot. Um, we then go down to the learned behaviors. These are things that we are good at, uh, but for whatever reason, we're slightly de-energized by them uh, and the use varies around them. We then move on to the weaknesses. These are things that we self-report as performing poorly. We are also de-energized by them. And again, the use can vary with those weaknesses. And lastly, the, the, the pot of gold, um, we have the, the unrealized strengths. These are the strengths that we perform well, we find energizing, but for whatever reason, we don't get to use as often. So considering those three core elements of strength, performance, energy, and use, and then taking into account what you see here, the model of development, um, that's how we've kind of really, that's the lens that we view strengths uh, to make it really applicable for us in our, and usable 
uh, as coaches, as practitioners, or just uh, as users inquiring more, more about strengths. Uh, and what we'll cover today is, is this, the, the patterns that we see in these strengths and how they've been showing up for us uh, uh, over this, this period uh, and what the data is really showing in terms of the global insights and, and how you can perhaps maybe um, have a look at that in comparison to your own profiles if you have that in front of you today. Super, thank you so much, Lauren, and a great introduction to, uh, I guess, the strengths, background and story. For some of you that will might be news, uh, and for some of you, um, of course, our, uh, our practitioners will, will, of course, already know this, but we're now getting to the juicy data side of things. So as, as Lauren said, do take advantage of the fact that we have two Q&A support people here. So I generally use chat for the more informal stuff. So, um, you know, let's keep the conversation flowing, what you're finding interesting, uh, maybe what your strengths, what are the common themes that uh, are in your profile. So that's sort of more informal chat. And then use Q&A um, if you want to uh, ask uh, Lauren or or Lizzie a question. Um, now I guess one of them, probably one of the biggest FAQs outside of will the recording be available, of course is going to be, well, what about other types of data? So today, the data that we're going to be sharing with you, I'm very excited to be doing so, is is the global content around the 60 strengths. So today we're not getting into gender, uh, we're not going into ethnicities uh, or, or countries and so forth, but we will. Um, and you'll probably appreciate with 60 strengths, five families, four quadrants, we thought today that was probably enough for you uh, to sort of grasp that data. And then very much thinking about uh, you know, the future and we, what we can present back to you, of course. Um, if we get time, I might do a couple of spoiler alerts on that for you. But as Lauren said, so, you know, we looked at um, earlier on in the year, um, 21,000 odd profiles. Um, now, all that this isn't really a COVID webinar, really. We're not sort of going in terms of what are all the necessary changes. What we're looking at is right now, what are the common and least common strengths that, that are out there um, in, and on how we when, when we've put that into families because it's a nice way to make the the the, uh, the data more practical so once we know this your job whether you're a coach you know a colleague a friend uh, a parent uh, an HR professional is to start to think about okay so those that are more common or least common what do we need to do in that space and why might they be and how might I help my colleagues once we know this is least common or more common what do we need to do in this area so just a little bit around my smiley faces then um, so because the most common within each family, let's hypothetically say uh, moral compass is, is the highest um, being strength, which is that's a nice positive sign. But the most common weakness in a family is obviously not quite so much, not quite so much for positive signs. So I've not gone straight in for sort of most common and least common in a, in a theme. But what I've done is happy face as in great, we're a lot of us have got these as strengths. And then I've got this kind of static face. And that's for you and, and whatever profession you're, you're in is to think that's where our learning needs to come in. That's where we need to help each other, help each other to develop those strengths further, or maybe find other strengths to compensate for those higher weaknesses as well. So where I can, I'll drop some uh, sort of maybe some highs and lows if, if there are changes in COVID. But that's how this data is going to be displayed to you here. Shout to say if there's anything across as we go, uh, and we're more than happy to answer your questions. So we're going to start with the being family then, and I, I guess from my experience having uh, running these uh, sessions and um, uh, coaching sessions for a good twelve years now, and uh, with strengths profiles, being family can often be the one that's that's hardest to sort of grasp in that it's it's more about our values. So we define this as our way of being in the world. And what I, again, so, you know, as I, as mentioned, what I'm going to do is explain to you where my static face is, my maybe an area for us to pay attention to. So I don't want to call this a negative area, just where we need to pay attention. So in the being family then, so remember, you know, it's sort of our values, maybe our tr intrinsic behaviours here, our, our way of being. So some of the things to pay attention to. So courage got a bit of a beating. So it's the least common realized strength across all 60. Remember, realized strengths are things that we're doing really well. We're energizing and we're, and we're doing a lot. So only 11% of us have courage as a realized strength. 
And it also tied in with it being the most common learned behavior. So that's where the majority of that data is going. It's going into more of the learned behavior around courage. So that says we can do it, um, but we're not really enjoying courage as much as we could. Um, so we're going to share some practical tips in each of these areas as we go as well. And uh, there's much more in the white paper that will be available um, after the session as well. And then um, surprising like a self-belief was sitting here in terms of one of the most uh, common weaknesses. Now that has had a bit of a COVID drop as well. Um, that's had a 7% uh, increase in people having that as a weakness, which is uh, something I think which, you know, let's understand that today and let's think about how we can really help people. Uh, if it were one as a coach, if you see that in somebody's weakness, I think it can help you think, well, actually, they're not, they're not alone. It's a common weakness. You share it with others um, to sort of help them feel not alone in that space. And it's just them. And then also using the data to think, if we know that as a society, if we know that in terms of um, you know, how do we put our strengths to work, then knowing that self-belief is something that so many of us are struggling with right now, you know, there may be some other sort of more um, sort of global initiatives around strengths that you're working on in your practice as a coach in your organization that you can start to think, you know, how do we generally boost people's confidence? Uh, and of course, strengths use is a huge part of that as well. So on the other side, then on the flip side, what are we doing um, that we, we want to celebrate and take note of right here then? So humility, those of you that know Strengths Profile will probably already have know, know this already, is the most common realised strength. 57% of people having that in their realised strength category. It was also the least common weakness. So Really interesting there that we love to celebrate and support other people. Uh, but again, I'm going to come on to, um, you know, maybe some practical tips as well for a couple of these uh, as we go forward. Um, and, uh, you know, so that, you know, this becomes something that you can really take away rather than just stats. Um, great to see that mission was the least common learned behavior. So we all want to have purpose. We enjoy having purpose. Um, and it's something that um, sort of sits there in terms of um, it's more likely to be an unrealized or realized strength for us than something that drains us. Who would, who would want, you know, it, it's, it's, less un, it's less common to be drained by purpose and mission. I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? And then and along those lines, the least common unrealized strength was legacy. And for those coaches, um, that uh, you know that work with SP, um, you'll probably see this time and time again. And I think you know, for me, when I'm working teams, certainly, and I see it, I really start to think about uh, you know the vision and the purpose and the clarity of goals and those things to really support legacy and how do we help them. That's thirty four percent of people are sitting on the potential about making the future better. I mean, wow, what a stat in terms of, you know, then our job as coaches and professionals is to then think, hmm, if we know that, how can we make that easier and clearer and make that vision uh, more accessible potentially for those with that who sit in that 34%. So again, you know, the strengths families uh, are a great way of clustering it. It might be that if you've only got the introductory profile, you don't have access to families, but don't worry um, because, you know, we're explaining them here and also it's all in the white paper. So you don't need your expert profile, um, but they do feature a bit more in that expert profile. But, you know, as a way of rather than bombarding you with data, it was a nice way to kind of say of, of, of this category, these are things that we're really doing well. These are things that we need your help to make sure that we can continue doing more of that. So that's the being family. Again, you know, so if there are any questions, we are here to support those. Um, and I just want to share maybe a couple of tips then on humility, because humility is all about being, is recognizing um, it, it, others for your success or for the success of the team. So I think when it comes to um, humility, it's really important to sort of maybe recognize people's voices, you know, that, that might struggle to get heard. So, you know, really helping other people to get shine the light on there. Um, those of you that work with teams, you will know that when often this comes up as, as, a, as a top uh, realized strength for a whole team, the downside to that, of course, is that, no, you did it. No, you did it. No, 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 it wasn't me. You did it. Uh, and if everybody's doing that, it's a case of, 
who did it <laughs> uh, and start to celebrate your own success and making sure that as teams and leaders and managers and that we're actually we are sharing success maybe to those that that really need to hear what we're doing so it's brilliant that it's a common realized strength but we deal we do possibly need to think about um, you know how we highlight everybody and also how we highlight our own success I know for those coaches and I recognize so many of you on the call it's great to have you here um, is that you know humility can can be overplay so, so do watch that one there um, and I'm going to move on to courage and thank you Alison she says courage is a realized strength for me but can be easy to overuse anything in our realized strengths of course we can be overused um, but, it, you know, and, and of course, it's about impact on you and others when we do that as well. So let's just share something on courage, because it was the most common learned behavior. So remind ourselves, it's something that we're really good at, but we're not enjoying all that much because we're pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone too often, maybe in not the right areas as well. So the tips here then in terms of making courage work for you, for your coaches, for your employees, is to push yourself out of your comfort zone little and often and not every day. We all know what it's like if we're constantly doing something that's testing us, you're going to get burnout. So and of course, that's not, you know, the aim of your learned behaviours is to use them when you need to, not all the time. They're a brilliant resource because they do the job, uh, but they are not your strengths. So also think about areas of your strengths. So courage is the bit that says, I love to push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, but then think about do that in areas that you're already great at. So, so it's, it's not quite so much of a, of a discomfort as well. Um, and then also think about, you know, the sorts of things that you're doing. Give yourself time to recover um, and take side steps potentially as well. So um, just some tips there around humility and courage, because what I'm trying to do here, there are, there are more in, in the paper, but is bring out the ones that we what we want to be able to do is is learn from this because it's it's great that we can be able to supply these stats but it's very much around this is why the webinar is called putting your strengths to work so what we want the so what and and um my legacy now my number one strength is about if we can help you know the data and as coaches and hr professionals friends colleagues parents you can help people more in these areas where we want to push people potentially so just a little pause there before we go into the next family. I can see Lauren typing away. So you're keeping her busy there with any questions. Um, Lauren, is there anything you want me to address on being uh, on the call before we go on to communicating? Give me a thumbs up or no, thumbs down. We're, we're all good here. We're good to Brilliant. continue with the next family. Super. Thank you very much. So communicating them. Oh, we love communicating. Who doesn't have in their team a communicating challenge, eh? Um, so often the, uh, the biggest challenge for us, there are eight different communicating strengths in the strengths family. Uh, and again, in your white paper, I know you're all desperate to get that now. Um, it does list as well. That's why you don't really need to have expert profiles, but um, you, it does list all the strengths that sit in that family for you in, in, in the white paper as well. So, um, the top communicating strength then. Um, so it'd be good to, um, what I'm gonna share with you is um, again, that the, the sort of, I don't wanna call them a, an unhappy face, a static face, yeah? Uh, so it appears then from the data that we're not natural storytellers when it comes to communicating. So it's something that we might need a bit more encouragement in um, around storytelling, because I'm sure that we all, know and appreciate the power of a very good story uh, perhaps not when time is running tight in a team meeting um, but on and most of the times it's really important to be able to sell that vision across when it comes to story so it was the most common weakness as well um, and then it comes to feedback so being able to give and receive both positive and negative feedback turned out that that's our biggest learn behavior when it comes to um, to communicating as well. So 54% of us uh, not always enjoying feedback. So again, I'm gonna come on to some tips momentarily, but before I go on to my little happy face then, so any ideas that you think might be the top communicating realized strength, ping it to me on chat. 
And while we're doing that, Simon says, narrator is my, my number one. Good to know it's a needed one. And, and that is, Simon, thank you for sharing because what is brilliant about that is I don't want you going, oh, data, data, data. I want you to be going, data, and what can I do with it? So now Simon knows in, a, in a, an environment where everybody's maybe not coming up with stories, his stories are really needed. Uh, so Alexandra is saying she loves feedback giving and receiving. So she needs to champion uh, feedback much more because she now knows that actually it's not common in terms of the realized strengths. It's more likely to be something we're not so, uh, we, we're good at, but we don't really enjoy. So we've got some humor, we've got some writer. Uh, narrator is, is Katie's, thank you for sharing. Um, uh, you know, listening we've got here. Uh, so uh, see some good guests. Uh, it's explainer. So, okay, so explainer being the most common realized strength. So when it comes to that first line of communication, um, it's, it's, it's the most common. Remember, so there are eight different ways in which we communicate. We're already sharing with you five here. Um, but it, it, you know, in terms of uh, when it comes to the most common, it's explainer. And I guess that makes sense. We, we, we can be factual, we can simplify messages and we can get our point across. Um, but it's important to recognize that then maybe there's a, you know, how we explain uh, and what else we're bringing in is probably really important when it comes to uh, communicating and, uh, and our explainer. So then we've got the least common then, um, learn behavior. So uh, we generally, when we've got humor, we enjoy using it. Uh, but it's also the most common unrealized strength. So I think there's some potential uh, in our humor here. And, um, and a COVID uh, little tip here is that humor has gone up two places uh, since uh, our pandemic experience. Obviously, many of us still experiencing it. Um, so, you know, we have absolutely been able to draw on that to, to support us during these times as well. But most of this data actually has been sort of similar during before and after um, COVID, um, which is why I'm just sort of showing ones that maybe leap out at me. Um, so counterpoint then is our least common weakness. <laughs> I think that's a really important one. I don't know when you're having team meetings, um, everyone's got an opinion, now you know why, because most people actually really enjoy using their counterpoint or able to use it um, and can really do the job around being able to come up with views and, and, uh, and um, different ways forward with counterpoint. So again, I think, you know, it, it's, it's helpful to see, okay, so if that's the case, we know most people have got an opinion about something, maybe when I'm presenting something, we need to have some recommendations or some next steps to shorten uh, that, that maybe that collection of data. Maybe you're only asking those people that need to be able to chip in with, with uh, conversation or new ideas. Um, strengths are innate. So yeah, so I think, um, you know, Lydia, thank you for sharing. And, and again, I guess if you now know that it's one of the less common uh, weaknesses, but it does mean that there's an awful lot of people out there um, when it comes to uh, counterpoint. So maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe uh, you can rely on other people uh, more so than you have done in the past. Um, Alexandra, thank you for your comment as well to uh, around humour and uh, isn't it? The, I think it's the Friends reunion tonight, thinking about Chandler. Um, I think humour is an important one to uh, just keep a check on, but um, certainly I don't know where I would be without the last it, without over the last sort of 15 months or so. So one to maybe dial up and dial down. Um, so let's just come on to a couple of tips here then. Um, so I think, you know, again, the idea with behind this data is very much, what can I take away from it now I know this? You know, what are the things that, that I can do differently or I can help other people with differently? Or, oh, you know, now we know this, you know, we can stop beating ourselves up. We can ask the right people. We can maybe champion things more. So, you know, we're sharing this data in a way that we really want you to start thinking about action. So feedback then, we don't really enjoy feedback all that much. And um, so thinking about this one, it's got to be authentic to you, I think. So, you know, delivering feedback that works for both of you. If you've got the explainer, use the explainer. If you've got narrator, you might want to use your narrator to do it. Um, but, you know, with feedback, of course, it's always about keeping it simple, keep it to the point um, and um, keep it sort of factual about what the information is, even if it's positive. 
how you saw that person do it and what they did and how they did it and how and how it made such a great impact as well. So they say it's not what you say, but how you say it. So if I'm saying great job, Laura, you know, really good job on that. <laughs> She's not necessarily uh, going to be taking that on board. So make sure you're doing it in a way that works um, in terms of how you're saying it. Uh, and we know about avoiding opinions and and you know as always this data is about action so there's the feedback positive or, or constructive what do you want them to do more of or less of going forward so try to be as specific as possible as well and give evidence so maybe it's you know, sort of thinking about dreading the feedback that you need to give um, and people don't enjoy positive feedback either giving that then be as um try just try to keep it really factual and specific um, just reading some of the comments coming through here um, about op feedback is a weakness for me. So great tips. Thank you, Alison. Um, you know, and again, use use others, I think, get some tips around what they do differently. But I think it was also for if it's a learned behavior for you. Remember, you can do it. You just don't really enjoy it all that much. So don't do it all day, every day. Um, if you've got one to ones to do, uh, maybe it's a case of spacing those out because you all know your learn behaviors of things that you do uh, as and when you need to, rather than dialing them up all the time. It looks like Lauren, thank you. You're doing a great job answering uh, all the questions that are coming through. We've also got Lizzie on the panel as well. So um, uh, do feel free to keep those coming. Uh, so narrator then, so in terms of storytelling, Simon's already gone, yay, that's me, I need to dial that up, absolutely, thank you Simon. Uh, but we now know it, it's sort of a twofold here and that it's the most common weakness within the communicating family, remember, uh, not overall, and it's the least common realised strength. So, you know, where you need to, where you think you want to be dialing this up, or your coaches, remember, I would imagine most of you are HR coaches, uh, coaches, sorry, um, it is, you know, don't do the job, don't do the job. If, if there are already other stories out there that you can borrow or tweak or amend, you know, try to keep them. Um, again, why do you want to deliver the story? Because you want to move somebody to action, to a goal, to, to take to take action is generally why people tell a story. Um, so, you know, think about other communicating strengths that you've got as well. If you need to be a bit more factual in there, go for it if that's your explainer. Uh, maybe it's about writing your story down, that way more people can read it anyway, and it's going to have more of that legacy in there. So, it's, you know, there's some great books on storytelling as well um, that, that are out there. Um, so if something, if it, you're a leader, it, it is something that you probably do want to think about doing uh, and doing more of. So it's, you know, again, just some food for thought that might work for you. Uh, and of course, use, using other people's uh, stories as well. So again, a quick pause. I'm going to quick flick through some of those um, uh, chats, but it looks like you're all on board. So thank you for that. Um, so yes, being narrator can be really difficult. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, and then when you're not a narrator, also you always notice when people are because very much so, um, you know, they, they have, so Simon occasionally you might overplay your narrator. And I guess, you know, in team environments, it means that, um, you know, some things need to be kept shorter and sweeter as well. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing there. Just uh, move to the point occasionally, Simon. Um, so uh, yeah, Alexandra saying love stories. The last seminar I went to, the presenter started with a story and it had me hooked. So yeah, and I think um, you know how you tell them obviously is is really important as well. So what else are you using there? So that's the communicating family then, and I'm shortly going to go on to the uh, motivating family. So again, this is kind of how what drives us to action. Uh, and again, I'm going to present the data in exactly the same way as well. Where So these are the areas then that we want to pay attention to. So now I've been coaching with Strengths Profile for 12 years. And since we've been gathering data, work ethic has always been the number one most common learned behavior. So this isn't a COVID thing. It's not a it's not a, where we are now in terms of society or you know, global politics. This is work ethic and it, it's always here in our learned behaviours. Um, and I'll come on to some tips around that, but I don't think we need to beat ourselves up. Uh, it's only moved a fraction since uh, the last 15 months as well, maybe at about 2%. 
um, but it is our most common learned behavior. Now this says that we are good at work and we can do it and we can do it really well. Uh, it just means that we, uh, we don't always want to be doing work. Now it's interesting though, because work ethic also have the least amount of weaknesses. It was an odd one, this one, in that, um, because actually the, the missing data here pretty much is in the realized strength. So still a good sort of 20, 3% of people having it as a realized strength. So that's your work ethic. I'm going to come on to that one in a bit more. Now, competitive, the most common weakness. Um, again, pretty typical here. And remember, so this is the opposite, if you like, of humility. So humility is about other people, celebrating other people. Competitive is about me and winning. So those two feel like polar opposites. So it kind of makes sense here that we've got competitive in our motivating. I think for me, when I, so those of you that are coaches will go, yep, many, many people we've seen that in. And I think certainly in my experience with competitive, it's okay because there are the, the biggest question you ask someone is, well, what would compet being competitive get you? Where do you want to be if you had competitive? What would the future look like if you were competitive? Once you've drilled down to that, what strengths are going to get you there instead? So some really important, you know, so I think competitive now we know that's here. Again, it's helping you devise as coaches and, and managers, leaders, HR, that you can think about how to help people when they when they feel that they need to be more competitive. So again, I'm going to turn to you motivating. Any thoughts around the most common motivating family? Uh, sorry, the most voting, the most common motivating realized strength in the family. Any ideas? Growth, thank you, Vicky. Catalyst. Action, growth. So growth, growth saw the, uh, the biggest increase during COVID, which was interesting, um, but it's not the top within the motivating. So I'll put you out of your misery then. So um, it's improver. So improver, we, we like to improve more than anything else when it comes to motivating. So 45% of us carrying that. And again, it was the most least common weakness as well. So most least, least common weakness as well with only 4% of us having that. So a real theme here around, you know, wanting to do better. And I guess that's something that's available to us all, isn't it? I guess some of those growth, um, you know, maybe change agent here, competitive, feel that, that we can't reach some of those based on maybe our role or the sorts of things we're doing, but improver is something that whatever we're doing, we always wanna look to see what could be done differently. Um, but change agent, I thought was an interesting one to highlight. Um, so in the data, in the, in the white paper, I do go through all four quadrants in each of the five families. Um, so if you're thinking, why isn't there anything on unrealized strengths in, uh, in, the, other, in the other side, um, it, you will find that absolutely in, in the white paper. Um, so the most common unrealized strength was change agent then. So, you know, a good piece just to take away. We want change, we like change, we enjoy change, but we're not involved in change. So maybe if you work more in change, you, you know, think about getting others involved. That's quite, that's quite high, 22% of us. Uh, sitting on the fence a bit when it comes to change. Um, so I'm just going to just whiz through uh, any questions before I go on to the actions, just in case. But Lauren, you'll pipe up if you want me to stop and take anything on that. Brilliant. So then when it comes to improver, how do we do even more of it? How do we get even better at improving? How do we shape our ideas? Uh, so think about maybe expanding on some of those, um, you know, thoughts and ideas, um, you know, think about different topics, uh, new learning. So we're constantly expanding our reach when it comes to improving as well. Um, I do find it really helpful when we sort of bounce ideas off other people, make sure that you know, you're, you're getting involved with diverse people as well. Um, we were uh, only yesterday I was having a, uh, a platform update conversation with my software engineers and uh, wow, it was a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of uh, diversity when it comes to, you know, how that is interpreted and what people have got, what they want to do differently on the dashboard, but it was great. Um, and, uh, you know, so really important to include that, that sort of diverse angle of, uh, of ideas. Um, and then um, so that they can really think about different 
different views to, to support to you and uh, the things that you're working on as well. Um, and then maybe think about, you know, what, are the, what when you've got an idea, what stocks you're taking that forward? So think about anything resource wise as well. And again, if you're a, a manager or a leader, you know, again, thinking about releasing more of that improver, um, what, you know, what are the barriers that might sit there? The work ethic then. So <laughs> it must be one of the biggest FAQs is I've got work ethic. My team have all got work ethic. You know, what does this mean? Um, and you will, many of you who know me will have heard me say so many times, please, you're not lazy. <laughs> uh, remember, you can do this well and you're good at it, but you don't want to do it all day, every day. But to me, that makes sense when it comes to work. We want to do it. We're, we're good at it. But do we want to do it all day, every day? And I'm sure many of my, my coaches on here on the call will recognize that when people do do it all day, every day, there's a risk of burnout there. So I'd suggest that it's in quite a healthy place um in a, in a learned behavior but just check in on it you know see see what else is going on around there if there's something um you know more uh, profound sort of sitting behind why it might be there but certainly when you get to a team and there's lots of people there with it as a learned behavior um it, it can sort of contribute to overall low energy um and remember to just keep taking breaks if you need them or if you've got tough projects just do them for a period of time rather than uh for you know sustained periods of time so I'm going to hit that relating family then. Um, and what is it then that we are, you know, struggle with? It's the enabler. So the enabler in us um, is, 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 is less common as a realized strength, and it's the most common as a weakness as well. And I guess the enabler is helping other people with the conditions to grow. So, you know, really thinking about, and I guess that's been difficult, hasn't it, over the last 15 months virtually as well. Um, but if it's something now we all know that sustain, building a sustainable future by enabling others is something that we, we often now need to think about, really pause and think, OK, do I need to do it or can some, you know, is there a better way of enabling other people in the teams to be doing it? And personalization, again, it's a fairly common learn behavior over the years. Uh, it, it's dropped again very slightly down to, to COVID. Um, and, um, and, and again, that's likely, I'm sure, due to very you know, picking up on those subtle um, clues of people when uh, and, and cues based on the, uh, you know, when, when they were sort of virtual way of our working. So the relationship deepener then, uh, most common realized strength, um, 47% and the esteem builder is something that, uh, again, we enjoy doing. We've got lots of hidden potential in that one as well. So boosting people's esteem, I'm sure we could do that with that right now. And then the least common weakness, great to see equality there and something that uh, you know we are all able to at least do well in that equality area. So I'm just going to uh, pause, have a quick flick through. It looks like um, we are, Lauren and the team are cracking through those questions. So let me go on to the top tips then. So enabler then, it's good to address that one because uh, it's something that some of us are sitting on maybe in an unrealized strength um, and have more opportunity to do but aren't. So open yourself up to, to others maybe outside of work. Think about mentoring and how that could be something that you could do more of or just, you know, it's that sustainability of the future, isn't it? You know, how do you help others do more for themselves? I think with, you know, with the way that we've been working, it's easier to do it ourselves, but we, we will absolutely be, um, you know, now we know it, let's, let's have a pause and think before that. Um, so, you know, think about being more, you know, as personable as you can, opening up the doors for, for you to enable so that people can come to you in and out of work. Um, and, and maybe they're natural ways. So Simon and his enabler will be naturally enabling by sharing stories in what he's doing as well. And then in terms of the esteem builder, it's the most common unrealized strength. So you've listened to others, um, you know, but really show that, show that you've listened, boost their esteem, what strengths have you spotted? Um, you know, work with the different groups of people. So you're constantly able to just do more of this in terms of sharing and discovering and celebrating. Of course, strengths is a great way to do that. And I think with the steam builder, my only caveat here was is be really authentic, um, because if, if you get this wrong, it can sound quite false. So, you know, something that's really you know, that's why it's helpful to give them feedback on what you've seen, because it's genuine. So just watch how that comes through. 
So we have one more family left, and then we've just got a couple of other slides to get you on your merry way. Now we will uh, be finishing the actual data side of it um, in the next five minutes, but we will stay on for any more Q&A as well. So the thinking family then. So this is where we saw the biggest difference in and during the COVID period, and I appreciate we're still still sort of fighting that, but the time optimizer saw the biggest drop in terms of where it, it sat. So it was always, I think that number 56 maybe in terms of um, most common, least common, but it's, it's really now the most, the least common realized strength and the most common weakness in the thinking family. It took a, a big drop here um, it, during COVID. And I think that's obviously around resource availability, plan Bs, and us just you know being in a very different world but I think now we know this really trying to support people doing more with what they've got available now we've come to this sort of hybrid way of working um, most common learned behavior is detail and that's pretty common for it to be there as well so then what do we do really well what do we celebrate what do we do even more of uh, resolving we love problems uh, and we want to be able to innovate more so 30 percent uh, of people having innovation in their unrealized strength that's brilliant you know that, that's people sitting on ideas so again if you're a leader a coach a manager know that fact and think about how do we get more ideas out of people rather than you know rather than them sitting in that quadrant how do we take those ideas to the next level and judgment we make good decisions whether we enjoy it or not we make good decisions it's the least common weakness um so yeah in there, thank you uh Alison, in terms of detail absolutely it's pretty high up there and what you do find is when you've got teams you want to be able to share the load when it comes to detail as well so they're the facts when it comes to um the uh the, the thinking families and uh, so all the five of the families. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is um, uh, sort of pause that piece and just let Lauren wrap up in terms of next steps. I can finish off taking some of that chat. Um, and then Lauren, if you're happy to, we're going to just kick off with kind of just next steps so that you guys can continually take strengths into the uh, next level. So I'm just going to move the slide uh, on. I'm going to ooh, so, so keep putting your strengths to work. What you will have in the slide pack, I'm just running out of time, is the spoiler alert for gender. So we'll cover that in the slide pack as uh, that will be sent to you later on. Sure. So I, I suppose with that application of, of strengths, you know, it's it's beyond just for, for us. So we've got that for us is the the uh, self awareness and the goal setting for your teams. We can absolutely apply strengths profile. We have the team profile report. So if we're thinking of getting our, our little aggregate data for the teams that we work in or that we support in from a development perspective, we can do use strengths profile for the teams and appreciating the diversity of the strengths. I think what we've gathered from today's insights from Trudy and even some of the chat is some of the things that we're energized by, other people aren't. And you know, it, it's reflected in some of the global data, but also with, with the teams, there are differences. So do have a look at uh, the other ways to apply strengths, whether you're working with teams, educators, for those in the, the school context, the university, college, you know, do understand the mot motivations and, and the career aspirations of the students there and how we can really support them to make conscious career decisions uh, through, through strengths profile, with, whether that's with interview confidence, assessment centres, how to just focus on their career if it's all a bit of a blur and their, their what next step isn't clear. And for those of you within organisations, you know, Strength Profile is fantastic for onboarding. You know, they've had an excellent experience through the recruitment processes. They've been hired for their seven to eight strengths and, and what next. So really joining up that, that recruitment process with some great development. So using Strength Profile for that, that onboarding and development. And we do know that manager conversations are key to people continuing their strengths journey uh, and really embedding the knowledge with strengths uh, and the, the, the strengths approach. Great stuff. So do apply strengths and you will re receive the follow-up of the strengths profile uh, white paper as Trudy has mentioned throughout today. Uh, and that will go into more detail. Uh, some of the top line, the headlines and the highlights that Trudy has been through today in the, the top five uh, strengths families. So, do download that white paper. It is available today, hot off the press. 
So do share those insights um, with your clients, with your coaches, on, on your social medias, but that data is now there for you and ready to access. Brilliant. Thank you, Lauren. I really tested your uh, time optimizer there, I think, in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> can she get through it all? It turns out that she can. Thank you so much for, for finishing that. So I just did want to end on time in terms of those of you that did have it in your diary for the uh, scheduled amount of time and the need to go. Um, as I say, the recording and everything is available and our lovely Lizzie will be sending that out to you very shortly. Um, but we, Lauren and I will be staying on for chat and, uh, and Q&A. So so we'll just hang around just in case there's anything else that you want to uh, to ask. But I think my plea to you all, um, as you have probably seen throughout the 45 minutes, is, is why it's called putting your strengths to work, is take the data, learn from it, and think how we can really support each other to do more or less in the areas that we're either finding challenging or, the, or, or already the sweet spots that we can do even better. So thank you for joining us for another SP webinar. It's great to have you with us. As I say, we will hang back um, and, um, and you know, enjoy taking your strengths to work. Thank you, everyone.